So as you can see, the process of doing the antiderivative using the substitution method is not supposed to be very complicated. The tough part is usually deciding what the u is. That's usually the difficult part. Once you decide what the u is, that then you know the steps follow. Um, first, step number one, decide what the u is, then find the derivative, then multiply both sides by the dx, so that way your letters u are isolated from your letters x. Once you do step one, two, three, you, you go back to the original problem and you start making your selections. So step number four is to find the terms that will come up with your du. Step number five is to find the terms that will turn into the u. Once you do that, then you integrate. That's step number six. And then finally, step number seven is to change the u back to the variables that were there in the problem, which were the variables x. And basically, that's how the process works. So there's, you know, guidelines, and it all depends on what your u is. And normally, you want to keep these formulas in mind, basically, um, when you're deciding what your u is. So we're making that a little bit more um, wordy over here with this page. So this tells you if you believe the power rule should be used, then you should be the base. If you have a letter e in your problem, then you should be the variable that is, or the variable or the expression is in the exponent. And if you have, if you think it's going to be a natural logarithm rule, then the u should be the denominator. Okay, so this table pretty much summarizes the strategies of the problem. So let me show you how it, wor how it works again by looking at example number two. So example number two says antiderivative of 8x to the power of 3 multiplied by 2x to the power of 4 plus 10 to the power of 3 dx. So first things first, we're going to need to figure out what the u of this problem is. And typically speaking, if you have an exponent like 3, the u should be what's on the base. So anytime you have like a set of parentheses that has an exponent, or if you have like a radical in your problem and there's like stuff inside the radical, usually the stuff inside the radical should be the u. So for this problem, the u is going to be 2x to the power of 4 plus 10. Next thing we do is find the derivative of u with respect to x. So in other terms, differentiate. What is the derivative of 2x to the power of 4? That's going to be 8x to the power of 3. What's the root of 10? Well, that's 0. So I'm not going to write it down. I'm just going to ignore it. You can put a plus 0 there if you want, but really, it's it's a 0. No, it doesn't matter. And the final thing we do is get rid of the dx from the side of the fraction. And we do that by multiplying this side by dx and this side by the dx. So whatever you do on one side, do the same on the other side. And this way, we end up with du equals to 8x cubed and then dx. And I'm going to put a little box around this because this is the table that's going to help me rewrite the original problem. And so here's how it's going to work. We're going to have an equal sign. We're going to have an antiderivative. All the letters that we write here should be letter U. There should be no more X's left over if you're doing this correctly. There may be numbers in there. There may be letter U in there, but there's not going to be any X's. So here we go. Anytime you see 8X cubed and DX according to the table you made, anytime you see 8X cubed and DX, you are supposed to erase them, and what do you write in their in their place? You write down du. So I'm going to go ahead and take those two together, erase them, and write down in their place du, because that's what my table basically told me to do. So far, so good? All right. Now, what about the 2x to the power 4 plus 10? What do I put in their place? According to this, anytime you see 2x to the power 4 plus 10, you are supposed to erase it and write down the variable u. So whatever 2x plus 4 plus 10 is, replace it with the variable u. Now what about the 3? There's a 3 right there in that exponent. What do I do with the 3? In my table, there's nothing about the power 3 itself. So I just leave it alone. So basically, this is just saying u cubed. All right, so now think to yourself, what is the antiderivative for u to the power of 3? How does the antiderivative work? It just adds 1 to the exponent and divides by the same number. So we're going to add 1 to the power of 3. 3 plus 1 is going to be 4. And divide by the same thing, plus c, where c is some sort of a real number. And that's it. You're finished now. Because now you just have to do this. Remember, u was 2x to the power of 4 plus 10. So just replace it with... 2x plus 4, so, sorry, 2x to the power of 4 plus 10. Everything else, 
pretty much stays. And that's the end. We're finished with the problem. So to recap, here's what happened in this problem. Started with step number one, deciding who the u is. Then I found the derivative of u. Then I find the du by itself by multiplying both sides by the dx. So those were step one, two, three. Then I go to the original problem and I replace 8x cubed and the dx with du. That was step number four. Step number five is to replace the 2x to the power of 4 plus 10 and leave the exponent 3 on top. Nobody cares about that. And then integrate the whole u cubed, du, and everything. Replace it with, you know, u to the power of 4 divided by 4 plus c. And then finally, rewrite the u as 2x plus, um, 2x to the power of 4 plus 10.